Good morning. We're in our first service here at Morgan Mill Baptist Church, and it's Father's Day today. We're very thankful for our fathers, both those of us that still have our fathers with us, and those our fathers are at home with the Lord. And remember, first and foremost, we're thankful for our Heavenly Father. So we're celebrating Father's Day today. In 1 Kings chapter 2, in verses 2 through 4, King David is approaching death. There are other texts that deal with King David's charge to the future, King Solomon, his son. But this one recorded in 1 Kings chapter 2 is when King David was very near death. So the charge is quite specific to his son. Beginning in verse 2, I'm going the way of all the earth. He's physically dying, going home to be with the Lord. 23rd Psalm, verse 6, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. The Hebrew here is ish. It does translate as man. The same Hebrew word in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. For this reason, a man, Ish, shall leave his father and his mother and be joined with his wife, Isha, and they shall become one flesh. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 19, and as Christians, we follow Christ, we follow our Lord. After having received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are his disciples. We are called, he calls us to follow me. We follow him being filled with the Holy Spirit, being saved through the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and trusting, praying to our Heavenly Father, and following God, both in the conduct, of, as we've seen in the Sermon on the Mount, but also in our Lord's teachings. Our Lord defines marriage, and he defines a man, Ish, and a woman, Isha, in Matthew the 19th chapter. It is in Greek there, a reign for man, but it dovetails with the Hebrew meaning. Matthew 19 verse 4, and he, Jesus, answered and said, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Compare this with Genesis and it's Ish and Isha. And he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. In the Old and New Testament, both men and women, by faith in God, even as compared to a marriage relationship, they're both called to be strong. They're both called with a challenge to follow and serve God. Many of us, our parents came out of both the Depression and then World War II, or some later on Korea or Vietnam. But our fathers and our mothers were strong. Many of us have the image of our father, much like John Wayne, and the image of our mother as Maureen O'Hara. I don't think watching their portrayals on film you would want to challenge a father like John Wayne or a mother like Maureen O'Hara. They're both strong people. They had to be strong. Going through the challenges, the wars that they went through, this is also reflected in the Old Testament. King David was passing the torch to King Solomon, and there was a challenge. We see even the writings of the wisdom literature reflected in Proverbs 31 of the challenge even for women. In Proverbs 31, a virtuous wife is to be a godly woman, not lazy, but a hard worker, provides food and clothing for her family. She's also an entrepreneur, verse 24, trades with tradesmen, verse 16, purchases a field. This does not fit the stereotype, the trope of those who mischaracterize scripture. God calls men and women, whom he defines, he calls them both to be strong. My grandmother on my mother's side, since they grew up rural, 
could shoot anything with a long barrel. She didn't care if it was a rifle or a shotgun. She just preferred to have something with a long barrel. And she needed to be. If grandfather was not in the home, she, on one occasion, uh, shot a rabid dog and kept the family safe. Both men and women need to be strong. My grandma on my father's side preferred pistols. In fact, it, well into her 80s, she was so accurate, she went out again because she kept uh, practicing. Went out with her, she was well into her 80s, and she fired her pistol into the target. And I was fairly young at that point. And she was surprised, Joe, are you surprised that I hit the target? No, ma'am, I'm surprised that every shot was the bullseye. So we're used to strong men and strong women. They would not have survived the Depression. They would have not have survived the wars they went through or the trials. There will be many trials coming up for King Solomon. And King David wants to make sure that his son is ready for that. The women also be prepared. Compare that with Proverbs 31. So David is speaking to his son on this occasion to charge him. Men are to be strong and courageous. Come back on Mother's Day and we'll cover the passages for women to be strong and courageous, but it's Father's Day. So King David was making sure that there was a charge to his son, King Solomon. And we'll continue on that charge and the biblical applications of that to us today in part two.